All right, folks, this is a big one. It's the new Vauxhall Astra. And when I say new, well, I really do mean brand new. I think this car looks great. And in this video, we're gonna take you through the interior, the practicality, some of the tech, and we're also gonna take it for a drive and let you know five ways that this new Astra is better than the car it replaces. So let's get to it. At the front, I'm seeing a bit of Lancia Delta Integrale. Okay, maybe that's pushing it, but the square jawline and the black front panel do look a lot more interesting than some of the boring hatchback designs we've seen recently. And if you peel away those body panels, you'll find a platform shared with cars like the Peugeot 308 and the DS4. And the Astra's interior tech has also seen a big step up under Stellantis ownership. And what about the cabin itself? Well, it's actually quite nice in here. It's stylish. You've got this pure panel display in front of you, two 10 inch screens, and generally, yeah, it feels well made and well designed. Okay, it's not super plush. It's not plush like a Volkswagen might be. Some of the materials are a little bit scratchy. The plastics aren't really that high quality, but generally, I think it's a really nice cabin. You've got this brand new steering wheel as well for Vauxhall which has a sort of compass design, they call it, with the spokes going across and then the spoke going down at the bottom here. So yeah, it all feels quite good and quite modern. And one thing that I really like that a few other manufacturers can take notes from Vauxhall on is that we've got physical climate control. So we've got a row of buttons here below the screen. And that means that you don't have to dive into the touch screen to change things like the temperature and the fan speed. They're all right here at your fingertips. That central infotainment screen is pretty sharp too, but the interface is a bit clunky in places and the touchscreen isn't the most responsive. The overall setup is still more user-friendly than a Volkswagen Golf's though. And in terms of tech in here, well, we've got wireless Android Auto, wireless Apple CarPlay as well, a 360 degree parking camera, which is really nice and useful. And we've even got a heated steering wheel. Next year, we'll get the first ever fully electric Astra, but for now, we get a 1.2 litre petrol three pot with either 108 bhp or 128 brake horsepower. There's also a 1.5 litre diesel along with a 1.6 litre petrol plug in hybrid. And we're driving the hybrid model, so we've got a 1.6 litre petrol engine paired to an electric motor to give 177 horsepower. Now, in the world of 400 horsepower hot hatches that might not sound like a lot but remember we've got an electric motor which means instant torque and there's 360 newton meters of the stuff so this is actually a deceptively rapid car especially when you stick it into the sport mode you get more response from the electric motor and it really does fly along this thing so it's a really nice powertrain actually it's punchy it's responsive and when you're mooching around town in electric only mode, well, it's really refined, really smooth. And when the engine does kick in, yeah, it does so smoothly as well. The hybrid can also do 37 miles on electric power alone, and it's super quiet and refined in EV mode. It bodes really well for the Astra E when that lands in 2023. So this car rides on the same EMP2 architecture as the new Peugeot 308 and on the whole it does feel a chunk more sophisticated than the previous Astra. So when you're going over a bumpy road, yeah, the Astra remains composed, flat and it does smother the worst of the bumps. But you do find that actually over the higher frequency bumps, like a ridge in the road or a rough surface, the car does transmit some vibration into the cabin. It's not really bad or really noticeable, but it doesn't stay completely composed when the going gets really rough, but it's good on the whole. So yeah, so far it does feel really slick and well-engineered. It's not groundbreaking, but when you're just mooching around like this, the Astra is an enjoyable hatchback. But what's it like when you want a bit more excitement? Well, you're gonna to have to switch into the sport mode to find out. Right, so the new Astra, <laughs> wow, you can hear the motor kicking in there with the hybrid system. It's not a super dynamic car. I mean, it's very good, it's sure-footed, and again, it feels sophisticated thanks to that EMP2 architecture, but it's not super sharp. It's not really dynamic like a Ford Focus, but do you know what? It's quite enjoyable, actually. It feels polished, it feels slick in the bends. 
and there really is plenty of grip. The damping's quite nice as well. The body stays nice and controlled. It does roll a little bit, but yeah, it's not gonna set your hair on fire. So it's not exactly a firecracker, but it does leave the previous Astra in the dust. Speaking of which, here are five ways that the new Astra is better than the old one. So number one has to be the way this car looks. I think it looks really modern and interesting. Now the old Astra wasn't an ugly car, but this has to be a step on, doesn't it? Just look at it. Amongst the Portuguese scenery, it looks great. And I think it's one of those few hatchbacks that you might actually want to buy just because it looks nice. The new Astra also feels much more tightly screwed together than the previous car. Now, like I said earlier, some of the materials don't feel particularly premium, like this rubberized plastic and this shiny piano black finish on the center console, but generally the buttons feel nice, the dashboard feels nice and solid, and yeah, build quality is pretty good. So as I said, the new Astra it's not a super athletic car to drive, but it's definitely more sure-footed. It's grippier and more composed and more stable when you're going around corners like this. And it's really easy to just thread it along when you're on the twisties. So in terms of practicality, the boot is 52 litres bigger than before. But unfortunately, even though this is a longer car than the previous Astra, well, there's still not much space in the back seats. And then, of course, this is the first ever Astra to be electrified. So you can have this, the plug-in hybrid version, and there's also going to be an Astra E, which is going to be all electric. That's going to come out later, but for now, you can plug this car in and get pure electric running and that extra torque that the electric motor brings, which is great. The new Astra costs from just over 23 grand, and it does need to do more than just improve on the previous model. It needs to outperform its rivals. And I'm not sure it moves the game on massively for a brand new hatchback because the Astra is very good in a lot of ways, but it doesn't excel in any particular area. So the Ford Focus, well, that's a sharper drive. The Skoda Octavia, that's more practical. And the Peugeot 308, well, it's much more luxurious inside. So we like the Astra, but we don't love it. 